Hello folks, happy Wednesday evening. I uh, hope it's a warm one for you, not too snowy and icy out there. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you could open up to the book of 1 Corinthians, and it's chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read uh, uh, starting in verse 6. <clears throat> um, the Apostle Paul, and I guess his co-author, uh, Sosthenes, uh, Paul says that he's writing on behalf of both of them, or they're both contributing to this letter to the church at Corinth. And um, <clears throat> these few verses speak of the wisdom of God and of the Spirit of God, uh, something that is so uh, precious. I don't think we fully understand it, um, but the Spirit of God certainly does. And we're, you know, we're flesh and blood. We think of things in flesh and blood terms, and we love um, uh, blessings and, and healings. Uh, and those things are important, and the Lord graciously helps us and provides those things for us, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but, you know, we're spiritual beings. Uh, we've got the flesh and blood, but, but God has, um, has given us a spirit, and uh, that is eternal, and that is really and truly where we exist. That is the, the, the heart of the matter. Other things are temporary. But let me go ahead and pick up reading in verse 6 here. Um, Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. So this is a special wisdom. This isn't a, a Greek philosophy. Uh, this isn't Roman ideology. Uh, this isn't secularism. The, those things are going to pass away. They're not eternal. But this is a special wisdom from the Spirit of God. Verse 7. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God. It is not obvious to the unbeliever, to those that do not have the Spirit of God, to the Spirit of the age. These things are not evident to them, yet we possess them. You can talk with your brothers and sisters in Christ who also have the spirit and wisdom of God, and you get this stuff. There's things, there's a camaraderie, there's an understanding that you have and they have that the spirit of the age of the people of the world do not have. But it is a secret and hidden wisdom of God, um, which God decreed before the ages, long time ago, for our glory. <laughs> So it is something that he knew before the world even began that he was going to impart this wisdom into us and it would be for our glory. Why? Because we can speak of this wisdom. We can live in this wisdom. We can be obedient to this wisdom so that one day before our Father, there will be a glory that will come to us. Um, you're not going to see it nowadays, uh, but in his kingdom, it will be there. And that's why we have it, so that we can demonstrate it and live it. Verse number eight, none of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So the Jewish people did not have it. The Romans did not have it. And if the Lord was crucified or lived during the time of the Greeks or the Persians, or um, uh, the Americans, <laughs> we would not have recognized this because it is a different wisdom. It's a wisdom of the age, but yet the Lord gives that spiritual wisdom. And in that, you can recognize who Christ is. Jesus said, if you know my father, you know who I am, and vice versa. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. So there is that spiritual discernment that wisdom that he gives, and it's something that is special that we have that most, unfortunately, do not. Verse number nine. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Now we hear this verse a lot. And we think, well, we don't know what the Lord's going to do with that one. Boy, we may have, well, boy, look at that guy. He's pretty smart, likes to floss his teeth, probably going to be a dentist. Maybe that's what the Lord has for him. 
Boy, she's got a nice smile, good talker. She could be a politician. That may be what the Lord has for her. That's not what this is talking about. It is referring to wisdom. And uh, Paul is saying there's no, the heart can't even imagine that what God is giving to them in this present day, that this spirit of wisdom is something that's coming from him now, that we as believers have this very special gift from God. It's not just something what we're going to be in the future or some potential that we have or some talent. This is the spirit of God. Verse number 10. Uh, th these things God has revealed to us through his spirit. So he's saying what God has prepared for those who love him. So this is something that Paul is saying. These things that God has prepared, uh, God has revealed to us through his spirit. So there is a revelation that you and I have of truths of God that has been revealed to us, not just through learning, although learning and studying are good things, but there's been a revelation and the Spirit of God has opened our eyes to these truths. That's why it really is nice if you have um, people that have a spirit and have wisdom of God that are fathers, that are mothers leading their family, that are principals leading their schools, that are professors in colleges, that are politicians leading large groups of people. If these people who have this special knowledge from God, this understanding, uh, they have a good, they're able to lead and to discern. They can see things that are good from God and they can also recognize evil for what it is and to stay away from it. And without that, uh, we suffer and we have them. Uh, still verse 10, for the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Uh, so the spirit of God even searches God. That part of the Trinity searches that part of the Trinity uh, to know and to understand the deep things of God the Father. The spirit knows that. Verse 15, for who knows a person's thoughts except for the spirit of that person which is in him? Um, so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So you and I are not in a good position of our own to use our own thoughts, our own understanding to discern how we are doing. We don't know. You can't make that judgment. A person can't judge himself and to find out, am I in the right way, the wrong way? If you do that, eventually you will justify about everything you're doing because your heart wants it. You're not a good judge of yourself, but the spirit of God that is in you, he will judge. He will judge what we do, and he is also aware of what the spirit of God desires. And, and as he goes and he knows the Father, he imparts it to us. He helps us to examine ourselves and our flesh and helps us to recognize what's good and what's not good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so necessary and it's so special. And, and this is what God has prepared for those who love him. This examination of the Spirit of God in our own lives. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. So even to understand these blessings, we need the spirit of God to help us, not the spirit of the world. It is a different bird altogether. We have to deal with the spirit of the world. We live around it. It affects, it does uh, try to influence our lives. It influences our friends and our families, but that is totally different. It is the spirit of God that, that continually is different from that and that we need to resist that spirit of the age. Uh, verse 13, and we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. And we need to be spiritual. We are not carnal. We're not just around walking around eating and drinking and surviving and buying stuff and then dying. No, we are spiritual. We are eternal. And we, um, 
these words are imparted to us. It's not just human wisdom, but the Spirit of God. It may be through preaching. It may be through reading your word. It may be through listening to something, but that Spirit of God ultimately is behind these things, teaching us and helping us to grow. Well, God bless you guys. I uh, hope you have a wonderful night, and uh, we'll see you again. So long.